All right, in today's video, we're going to look at the idea of the infinite scroll. If you've ever used a site like Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest, which I have right here, you're familiar with the infinite scroll. So basically what you have is a bunch of images or content that's loaded initially. And no matter how much you scroll, more and more content continues to get loaded. So this is what we're going to be learning to create in this video. So let's get going. All right, so for the purposes of this video, we're going to be getting our images from this site here, Adorable Avatars. And as you can see, the URL here, avatars.adorable.io. Now, the way that we're going to use this API to get the images, we're going to create a constant. We'll call it URL. And we're going to assign it to the string here, api.adorable.io slash avatars. And the way that this is going to work is that at the end of this URL string, we're going to append a number and it can be any random number. For each random number, we're going to generate a different random image or random avatar. So let's try an example of this. Let's copy this URL. Let's go into the browser and let's try 23, for example. And here you can see that we get this particular avatar at number 23. If we put in number 24, for example, well, we get this random avatar and so on. So part of what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to generate a random number every time that we create an image and append it onto this URL. But before we do that, let's take a step back for a second and let's just take a look at what we have here for the HTML. So for the HTML, we just have some basic boilerplate. Uh, what's important, we have a link tag here linking to the styles.css file. And we also have a script tag here, which links to our app.js file where we're going to write our JavaScript. And as far as the DOM, it's very simple. We just have a single div here with a class of container. And this class of container is what we're going to be appending our images to. So we know we're going to need to make reference to that container div. So let's go ahead and grab it here in the JavaScript. We'll make a constant. Let's call it container. And let's set that equal to document.querySelector. And then we'll give it that container class. And that'll give us access now to this container div here. So now that we have our basic setup, let's just talk big picture for a second. We'll break this task down basically into two different parts. So here's our part one. Part one, we'll get a batch of images and we'll append those images to our container div. All right, and then in part two, let's just make a comment here for part two. Part two, we're going to basically listen for a scroll event. And we'll listen for that scroll event on the window object. And we're going to load more images if we reach the bottom of the window. So let's tackle part one first. I'll leave these comments in place just so we can stay organized. So initially, we want to display a batch of images to the user. When they hit the site, we want them to see a certain number of images. So that number of images could be whatever we choose. In our case, let's plan to have 10 images appear on the screen on the initial load. So to do that, let's make a function and we'll call it load images. Now we're going to pass in here or we're going to set up a parameter in this load images function and we'll call it num images. And we're going to make that a default parameter set to a count of 10 because on initial load, we're going to have 10 images appear. And every time the scroll bar hits the bottom of the window, we'll load 10 more images. Now to generate all these images, we'll want to create some kind of loop. And you can do this however you like. In this case, I'm just going to use a while loop. So I'm going to say while, and we'll set up a variable. We'll call it I, and this is going to act sort of as a count for us so that we can loop using this while loop 10 times. So we'll say I, which starts off as zero, while I is less than num images. All right, so we're going to do something every time this loop happens. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to create an image element and we're going to set its source attribute to be a random image that we get. And then we're going to take that image element and we're going to append it to the container div. And then we'll want to increment I each time this loop comes around so that we can break out of the while loop once we've generated 10 images. So let's go ahead and set this while loop up. The first thing we'll want to do in our loop is we'll want to generate an image element. We'll call it const image. We'll say document.create element, and that's going to be an image element. And then that image element, its source, we're going to set that equal to this URL. And remember, when we use this URL, we're going to want to append a random number onto the end of this URL 
because each time this while loop occurs, we want a different image to be appended to the container. So in order to do that, we're going to use some string interpolation here. We're going to use our backticks. And then what we're going to do is we are going to pass in the URL first, and then we're going to write a function and we're going to call it get rand num. And this function, which we're going to write in a second, is going to generate the random number that will get appended onto this URL. Right? And we want to do this. We want to invoke this function within the while loop each time because we want this function to generate a random number each time. And then since we have access to this container element, we can make reference to it here. And then we can append that image element that we created here. And then don't forget that we'll want to increment our counter or our i variable so that eventually we can break out of this while loop once we've generated 10 images. Cool, so we've got this loop going. Now let's work on this get random number function so we can generate a random number each time the loop occurs. So let's write function get rand num. So we can use math.random. And we'll multiply that by 100. I just chose that arbitrarily. And then we'll enclose that in parentheses because we're going to want to use math.floor on this whole thing so we can get a number from 0 to 99, which will give us 100 possible numbers in total. And then we're going to want to return this value out of this function. All right, so when get random number is called here, this is going to result in a random number 0 to 99. So at this point, we can save. And actually, we'll have to call load images initially. So we can just do that here. And now let's flip over to the browser, and we should see, hopefully, 10 random images appear on the screen. And here we see 10 random images, or 10 random avatars. It's a little bit hard to see the bottom one, but we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then another one on the bottom here, making it 10. Now, I'm not really focused on the CSS here in this video, but I can show you the CSS file for a second. All I have going on is a simple container class here, which I've given a display of flex, and I've given it a flex wrap property and set that to wrap so that each of these rows will wrap. And then on each image here, I've just given it a little bit of margin so that we can see each image separately here. Great, so basically we've taken care of part one now. We've gotten a batch of images and we appended them to the container div here. And so now let's get rid of this part one comment so we can make a little bit more room on the screen and we'll move on to part two. So like we said before in part two, we want to listen for a scroll event and we're gonna load more images if the scroll bar has reached the bottom of the window. So what you should know is that in the window, when we move the scroll bar, we get access to a scroll event. So we can come here into our JavaScript and on the window object, we can add an event listener. And the event we're gonna listen for is called scroll. And as we usually do with an event listener, we write a callback function, which is gonna fire every time a scroll event occurs. For now, let's just log something out to the console every time we scroll, just so we can see the scroll event in action. We're going to log out something called scroll y on the window object. And what scroll y represents is the number of pixels that we've scrolled down from the top of the window. So let's open up the console in the browser here. And let's start scrolling and take a look in the console. And here you can see the number of pixels that we've scrolled down. 2, 5, 8, 11, and so on. Cool, so that just shows us how we get a scroll event every time we move the scroll bar. Now in this function here, what we really want to do is we want to listen for the scroll event and determine when the scroll bar has reached the bottom of the window. Because at that point, we want to call load images again so we can get another batch of 10 images. So the question is, how are we going to determine when the scroll bar has reached the bottom of the window? Well, to determine that, there's three things that we're going to need to learn about. And those things can be seen here in this diagram. They are the scroll height, which you can see here on the right side. And then on the left side, you can see scroll Y here, which we've talked about briefly before. And you can also see inner height. So we're going to use these three things to make a calculation, which is going to help us determine if the scroll bar has reached the bottom of the window. So let's look a little bit more closely at what these three properties are. What I'm showing here is the entire document. This part here on the top and this part here on the bottom represent parts of the document that the user doesn't see. This part here represents the visible part of the window, the part that the user can see. So when we talk about scroll height, what we're talking about is the height of the entire document. 
including those parts of the document that aren't currently visible on the screen due to overflow. So again, this part of the document is the part that we can see, and these parts here on the top and the bottom, in this example, would be the parts that we can't see or the parts that are not currently visible. Now this part here, the part that's visible, we can get its measurement by using the inner height property. So again, if I flip back to the browser, you can see that I've opened the console here, which is reducing the actual visibility of the screen. And I can make that part more visible or less visible by changing the height of the console. Why don't we do this? For now in our scroll event listener, let's console.log out the window.inner height. And let's see how that changes when we move the height of the console. So now it's 635, and let's change the height of the console, and then let's scroll, and now we can see that it's 707. Because we lowered the height of the console, we have more visible area here. And let's raise the height of the console, now we have less visible area here. And let's scroll, and we can see it's been reduced to 261 pixels. All right, so that's what window.inner height is. And then finally, this scroll Y property here, well, we've already discussed that before. Scroll Y is the amount that we've scrolled down from the top of the window. And here in parentheses, I put this other property called page Y offset. And page Y offset really is just an alias to scroll Y. So you can use this in place of scroll Y if you want. And supposedly this is better supported in older browsers. So what we're going for is we want to add up the inner height of the window plus the scroll Y offset. So the amount that we've scrolled down from the top. And we want to see if those two properties combined equals the scroll height. Because if it does, that means that we've reached the bottom of the window. Now we understand the calculation, so all we have to do is implement it in the code. So first let's just go ahead and get rid of this comment here. We know what we need to do. We'll just clear up some screen space. And within this function where we're listening for the scroll event, we'll go ahead and we'll create an if statement. So we're going to say if the window dot scroll y plus the window dot inner height we're going to say if those two things are greater or equal to the document dot document element dot scroll height then what we want to do is we want to load images we're going to call this load images function again that'll give us 10 more images so if i didn't mention it before this document dot document element thing here this is equal to the HTML element or the root element. So scroll height is a property on the HTML element actually. So we should be in place now to get more images when our scroll bar hits the bottom of the screen. Let's go try it out. So here we got our initial 10 images, three, six, nine. Hopefully you can see on the bottom of the screen there's a 10th one here. And let's go ahead and scroll down. Let's see if we get 10 more images. So here we go. And we hit the bottom of the screen, and hopefully you could see that now we have more than 10 images. We should have 20 total. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20. And if we continue scrolling, we should get even more images, another 10. There we go. And it'll just keep loading images as we scroll down. Obviously, there's more we can do with this infinite scrolling, like we could make a loading message appear. Uh, sometimes loading new images or new content will take a little bit of time, so we might want to enhance the user experience and create a little loading message to show that we're loading. Uh, we can also do some performance optimization things here, but I think I'll save that for another tutorial. In this tutorial, I just wanted to show you how to get the basics of infinite scrolling working. If you feel like you got some value out of this tutorial, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you next time.